Hi folks, this is Jake. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're looking at the Word of God in your life. If you'd like to turn to Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. We pray, dear Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and your grace and care. And we give you the prayers and the glory and the honour. And Father, we pray that you be in this study today, in Jesus' name. May your Holy Spirit be with us, Lord. Amen. Okay. Um, so Acts chapter 17, verse 11 and 12, it says, These were more firm-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Okay. Therefore many of them believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. The Word of God is an amazing book, and many people say they reject it because they, they're intellectuals, and they've looked into it, and they've rejected it. But John Blanchard, a, a Christian evangelist, once was talking to some atheist in a in a uh, cafe and he said look if I provided all the evidence that the Christian faith is true would you believe and they said no and so he said well your problem is not evidence but your problem is moral you are simply not willing to let the gospel change you it's not about evidence A.T. Robinson said the Bereans were eagerly interested in the new message of Paul and Silas but they wanted to see it for themselves. What a noble attitude. Paul's preaching made Bible students of them. The Bereans in this text wanted to learn about the truth. They wanted to investigate. They wanted to look into the evidence. And there's an encouragement that if we do that, we will be blessed. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 1. Verse 2 and 3 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. You see, if we study the word of God, it will bless us. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. One Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. For this reason we also thank God without ceasing because when you received the word of God which is you you heard from us you welcomed it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of God which also effectively works in you who believe. And if we study the word of God we will begin to see that it is the word of God as we open our lives to the word. First of all receiving God's Word. question is, why do you go to church? Or why are you looking into Christianity? Are you interested in receiving the Word of God? It says in 2 Timothy 3.14 um, let, Let's have a look at that text. 2 Timothy 3.14 Great text. Take your Bible if you've got one. 2 Timothy 3.14 It says but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work the scriptures can make you wise unto salvation. That's one reason to receive the word. If you turn to Acts chapter 8, 26. And so I ask, are you receiving the word to find salvation? Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise, go towards the south along the road which goes down to the Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert. So he arose and went to behold a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, 
the queen of the Ethiopians who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship was returning and sitting in his chariot he was reading Isaiah the prophet and then the spirit said to Philip go near and overtake this chariot so Philip ran to him heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said do you understand what you were reading he said how can I un unless someone guides me and he asked Philip to come up and sit with him the place in the scripture which he read was this he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearers is silent so he opened not his mouth and his humi humiliation his justice was taken away and who will declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth so the eunuch answered Philip and said I ask you of whom does the prophet say this of himself or of some other man and Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the scriptures preached Jesus to him but here's a, a Ethiopian eunuch on his chariot doing the business of the queen for the queen but he's reading Isaiah the prophet and as he's reading Isaiah the prophet he's seeking salvation and Philip helped him to understand fully and so if you want to know the gospel if you want to know Christianity if you want to know whether it's true you've got to sincerely want to seek salvation you've got to be open-minded to that salvation otherwise you will never ever find the truth secondly studying the Word of God you know if you were in a desert and you saw an oasis it would refresh you if it was real you go to the little water bed and you drink in the desert and it refreshes you and that's what the Word of God is it will refresh you and encourage you as you study it President Reagan said within the covers of the Bible are all the answers for all the problems men face but sadly today many are going to depart from the faith many are going to depart from studying the Word of God 2 Timothy chapter 3 1 15 but now this that in the last days perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves lovers of money boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents and thankful unholy unloving unforgiving slanderous without self-control brutal despisers of good traitors headstrong haughty lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying its power and from such people turn away for of this sort are those who creep into households and make captive of gullible woman loaded down with l sins led away by various lusts always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth now as Jans and Jamborees resisted Moses so do these also resist the truth men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith but they will progress no further for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was so in the last days people will just walk their own way they will not want to know the Word of God even in the church so do you really want to know it we need to teach the Bible we turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 it says be diligent to present yourself approved of God a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth you need to be a person who studies the word of God diligently and teach it diligently we need to be mighty in the scriptures if we turn to Acts chapter 18 especially you young people you need to be mighty in the scriptures Acts 18 24 says now a certain Jew named Apollos born in Alexandria an eloquent man and mighty excuse me in the scriptures came to Ephesus this man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord through though he knew only the baptism of John but Apollos was a man mighty in the scriptures and you a mighty woman man of God in the scriptures you need to feed yourself it's, it's good to listen to pastors and preachers but there's got to come a time when you start self-feeding it's got to come a time when you start to study the Bible 2 Timothy uh, 1 John chapter 2 verse 27 but the anointing which you have received from him 
abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in you. There's anointing. There's an anointing that teaches you, which means, um, you, it, it's what it means is, um, it means that you can study the Bible, and the Holy Spirit will teach you. Okay. Now that doesn't mean to say we don't need pastors and preachers. We need people who teach us the Word of God. We need people in authority who are uh, over us and we respect. Okay, and who can teach the Word of God. But at the same time, you need to grow up and feed yourself spiritually. Okay. Deuteronomy 11, verse 18. Deuteronomy 11.18 Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be front frontlets before your eyes. You shall teach them to your children speaking of them when you sit in your house when you walk in the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. The Lord is saying look you've got to be saturated saturate your own life and your family in the word of God. Okay? And then Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8 says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. But here, he's saying that you should meditate on the word of God day and night. Okay? You've got to be strong today. As a young people, you've got to get strong you can't just uh, afford to drift anymore at university or college. You've got to get your Bible out and read it daily and get strong in it. Okay. Um, so we've looked at receiving God's Word. We've looked at studying God's Word. And then finally believing God's Word. There's a lot of people going to university and college today. And we're seeing a lot of young people come back and losing their faith. But we've got to be believers of the word. We've got to know that this is the word of God. And believe it. Okay. I'm just going to give you some parameters why the Bible is the word of God. It's the word of God. Because it makes clear our salvation. It's the word of God because of prophecy. In Psalm 22, there's a prophecy that, G that the Messiah would have lots cast for his garments. And that's what was prophesied. Number three, the Bible has not changed. They say that it's changed. The Dead Sea Scrolls show that the textual veracity of the Bible is intact. Um, the Bible's teaching is the most purest teaching ever. It tells you to live a holy, godly life. The Bible changes lives. <clears throat> the Bible has been the most attacked book in all of history and yet still stands today but if we turn to John 17:17 17, 17, John 17:17 17, 17, sanctify them by by your truth your word is truth sanctify them by your by your word your word is truth in other words, you can't grow in a holy way unless you're sanctified reading the Word. And what that means is, if you are in unbelief, it's probably because you're walking in the way of sin. If you walk in the way of immorality, it will bring unbelief in your life. So you need to clean up your life, and as you clean up your life, you'll have stronger faith. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. Uh, Proverbs 2 
Proverbs 2, 1 to 5. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands with you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord. Only until you as an atheist or you as an individual take this book seriously and desire to seek it, desire to hunger after what it has to say, only until you do that will you ever find truth. Psalm 119, 119. verse 18 says open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law you've got to pray that God would open the eyes your eyes James 1 21 James 1 21 therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to say so basically someone who comes along and says look I'm a Christian but I doubt in the Word of God or someone comes along and says look I'm an atheist and I don't believe in the Word of God basically this text is saying look You've got to sanctify yourself. You start living a holy life, you'll begin to see the Bible as being true. You've got to seek it, the Bible, as a treasure, that it's the most important thing in the world. You've got to ask God to open your eyes, and you've got to turn away from all sin in your life. And as you do that, the Word of God will open up to you, and you'll, it will confirm itself as the Word. Okay? But the question is, are you reading the Bible? Are you letting it soak into you and mould your life? If you turn to Matthew, Matthew 13, Matthew 13, uh, Verse 3. Excuse me. Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of the earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on the ground, good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundred and some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And he answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parable, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people have grown dim. Their eyes, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and their hear with their ears lest they should understand with their, their hearts and turn so that I should le heal them but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear for as surely I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it therefore hear the parable of the sower when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was crowned in his heart. This is he who receives the seed by the wayside, but he who receives the seed on stony place, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. 
Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of the riches and the deceitfulness of the riches jolt the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. So the question is, what kind of seed is your heart? Are you allowing the word of God to rest and to grow and bear fruit? Or are you a person whose the seed is just not getting deep in? For whatever reason, the curse of the world, even persecution, what people might say about you, these things are keeping you back from studying the Bible. John Wesley said, I want to know one thing, the way to heaven and how to land safe on that happy shore. God himself has condescend to teach the way for this very end. He came from heaven and I've written it down in a book. Oh, give me that book. One writer said, who's anonymous, This book contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, read it to be safe, practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveller's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's charter. Here paradise is restored, heaven opened, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand object, our good is its design, and the glory of God its end. It shall fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, a river of pleasure. It is given you in life, will be opened you in judgment, and will be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, will reward the greatest labor, and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. I trust that will be a blessing to you. And I come before you, Lord, and I come before you, and I come before the Lord, and let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing on the word. Almighty God, we come before you today and we're reminded that your word is truth, that we should receive it humbly and we should study it diligently. And Lord, I pray for all the young people out there today who hear this message, that Father, you would use this message to strengthen them, to encourage them and to build them up in their faith. I ask this, Father, in your name and for your glory, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening and take care. Don't forget, if you're around in Manchester, don't forget to come to Piccadilly Gardens Community Church where we get these kind of Bible studies and messages. Um, if you want to know uh, the services, you can look on the YouTube channel, the time of the services. If you want to know how to get here, just ring me. 0751279 0751279 If you want to um, come street preaching with me, uh, just give me a ring and meet me down in Manchester. Let me know uh, what day you're available. We can meet down, have some lunch together and do some preaching together. Okay? Thank you for listening and take care. God bless.